Hello, and welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. After last week's video about everything going wrong, a number of really kind folks in the retro computing community reached out to me and asked if I wanted to buy some of their stuff for great prices, which I immediately and enthusiastically said yes to. So today, we're going to do a pickups episode. All set? Bottoms up. <laughs> So October was kind of a total loss, um, hopefully other than my Halloween video, fingers crossed. Um, however, November is looking like it's going to be a really solid retro system build and uh, test month. So let's get started. First off, these are the PCI Express graphics cards that I currently own that are not also in use in a system right now, i.e. They're not my 1080 Ti in my main PC. So, uh, since it's not a great spread of GPUs, I figured I would I would fix that. I've got quite a large gap between, like, the 7900 and this GTX 240, and then this GTX 465. And also, like, this is, for the longest time, this has been my fastest Radeon, just an X1900 Pro. Which, it, it's a great card, don't get me wrong, and the cooler is amazing, but it's not really that fast. So, first of all, I picked up a couple of things on eBay uh, that will open right now. So let me get these cards out of the way. So the first one, you may have noticed, if, uh, if you've been following my Twitter, and uh, if you haven't been following my Twitter, you should totally follow my Twitter. This is a FireGL V7700. Uh, this is basically a Radeon HD 3870, except this costs practically nothing, and there's basically no downside. Um, this is the one that, <laughs> this several of these I've had trouble testing because they are uh, DVI only. And this one, uh, very interestingly, also includes a display port. However, it is a very, very, very early display port, and it doesn't show the system uh, video during booting, so. Not that useful for me in my current predicament uh, with no with no DVI uh, connectivity. I'm working on it. <laughs> my first batch of DVI adapters hasn't arrived yet because I don't know why. Anyway, uh, my next card. Again, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know I have this. This is a Radeon HD 5770. Uh, just a pretty basic mid-range Terrascale card. Um, for me, this was the card that let me get back into PC gaming uh, back when my 939 system died. Um, this is really, it's a really important card to me. It's not really anything special to anyone else, but I really like it. So let me go grab some scissors, and we'll open this up. And clearly by scissors, I mean knife. So open this up. I don't know if I even need a knife to open this. I think it's just sealed in saran wrap. Yeah, this isn't even cling wrap, or if this isn't even shrink wrap, it's just cling wrap. So I guess we'll find out how new in box this actually is. Um, don't remember if the seller sold it as new in box, but shiny good condition box was definitely part of the deal. And I guess if that, if getting that means wrapping your bat or your box in cling wrap, sure. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, nope, this is not new. Box is in okay shape. There's a ding up here in the corner. Some things on the edges. Otherwise, seems okay. Taped along the edge. Yeah, it's. Yeah. This is what you get for like collecting old graphics cards. Like, all I really want is something representative of the performance I had back then so that I can compare it 
to other cards of the era. Because that is what I like to do. Well, it's got all the stuff. Nice. Comes with a crosswire connector. Nice. Oh, look at that. A DVD to VGA. My life is saved. <laughs> I should have opened this box earlier. There's a, oh look, an official Molex to six pin. That's how you know it's not janky at all. And, open the card here. Let's see if it'll come out of here nicely. Looks like it won't. It doesn't seem to be the box. This doesn't seem to be the bag it was supposed to come in. It's just slightly too small. A few moments later. Yeah. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's such a good cooler. Beautiful. Awesome. I am super looking forward to this. And some kind of heat pipes and stuff. The 5770 I had did not have heat pipes. It was not this good of a card. <laughs> so this is pretty awesome. Crossfire bridge. DVI to DJ is going to come in handy later. Like, very soon. Since I am still waiting for the other ones to arrive. Awesome. That is fantastic. I am extremely excited about that. Alright, let's move you over. Okay, one last card that I got off of eBay. This came from Vision Tech store. Uh, Vision Tech seems to have been like... Oh, uh, Vision Tech seems to be selling off a bunch of their old stock. Um, I don't know if this is going to be actually new or good, but it should be an X1300 on PCI. So it should be about twice as fast as my 9200 SE, which um, I've done a little bit of testing with it. And if you put a fast enough CPU on it, it actually turns into a pretty decent little graphics card. So hopefully, for PCI only systems, this is going to be really nice. Let's see if it's actually what it's supposed to be. like the thing. And another DVI to VGA. All I had to do is buy a couple of graphics cards. Get the get the three dollar adapters that I'm missing. That should be really interesting to see. Looks okay, that cap looks fine. It's got a bridge chip on it. I'm going to throw a heat sink on that bridge chip and see if that helps performance. It's been one of the tests that I do with it. Cool! That was, that was a worthwhile $15. So lastly, I know I showed you in the last video, this board that 945 uh, GMA board. A bunch of these graphics cards are going to be going into this board, but I need a cooler for it. So I also picked up a pair of these. These are not particularly special, but they are inexpensive. I do have two, two, heat, two heat pipes on them. Let's pop this open quick and take a look at it and see how it is my battery runs out here.
That's not bad, that's sizable. That'll do. That'll at least do for the for the lower end Pentium 4s that I'll be testing in this board. I picked up a slew of Pentium 4s. <laughs> so many Pentium 4s. Fortunately, they're nice and cheap. So they're like $5 a CPU. So I could test a lot of really interesting uh, combinations. Like, there are versions of... This, this LGA 775 only ever saw Prescott, but there are versions of Prescott that have hyper-threading and not hyper-threading. So, it'd be interesting to test that, see how much of a difference that makes. Alright, anyway, that's the stuff that I've bought. Oh, I have one more thing. Hang on. <laughs> Remember the slot 1 build-off? Remember my slot 1 CPU testing videos where I lamented not being able to overclock anything? That changes today. Because not only can I do slot 1, I can also do socket 370. These boards don't have super, super great reputations for performance, um, but I'm hopeful, I'm very, very hopeful, since we've got, we've got an AGP slot, we've got socket 370, I'm, fingers crossed, this is going to let me do it. It's going to let me overclock my Celeron to 450, and over and underclock a bunch of the other slot 1 CPUs that I've got, so hopefully. Now, before my camera battery dies, I'm going to switch cameras, and we'll continue this unboxing. Okay, so the next set of packages are all from Patrick over at OCR, Old Computer Rebuilds. Uh, I'll throw his um, YouTube channel up here, right here. Ta da! Okay, he. <laughs> He reached out to me after he saw my, my Socket 7 motherboard that had died. Um, that is this one. That uh, died an inglorious death. Um, I, I am still going to recap this board um, and feature it in a later video, and I'll probably film my recapping of it. I just need to order the caps and the diodes. But Patrick reached out to me um, and said, hey, do you want do you want an, an AGP socket 7 motherboard? And I'm like, um, yeah, do you, do you have one? And so, yeah. And I'm like, okay, um, you know, what, what do you want for it? And he's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> Seriously, this guy's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, can I at least pay you shipping? And he's like, don't, don't worry about it. So, we'll get to that motherboard. Uh, but he also, here's the thing, when I when I got his package, packages, um, there are three boxes. I thought he was going to send one, like, medium-sized USPS box with a motherboard in it and maybe some extras. And he sent three boxes full of all this stuff. Here, let me grab it. Full of all this stuff. Look at all this. This is this is too much. This is entirely too much stuff for me. Look at how much stuff he sent. I what? So this is this is the motherboard. I'm pretty sure. This I don't know. Tons of cards, and then a bag full of RAM. Oh my gosh, there's <laughs> just so much stuff in here. So anyway, uh, we're going to go through all this and uh, open it up and see what it is. The, I, as you can see, I have not opened this yet, so we're going to find out together. It'll be an adventure. Okay, so let's start with these three things. This I know is RAM, so this will be an easy open. I have no idea what these are. And of course, there is the motherboard here in the corner, which we'll get to.
Oh my gosh. That is a lot of RAM. That is a mix of DDR, DDR2, well this is DDR, 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 DDR. Oh, this is, oh wow, this is 266. I don't have any 266. What else is in here? And 400. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. That's awesome. Thank you. So much DDR. <laughs> Okay, this one next. Let's see what this is. I can't tell by the shape of it. Ooh, ooh, that's a GPU. GPU. Oh, heck. Look at that. That is an absolute unit. Wow, thank you. How the heck? That is so cool. Needs a little cleaning, but looks awesome. I can't wait to try it. Thank you. Oh, 9800 GTX Plus. Damn. <laughs> Holy. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's what this is going to be like, maybe. Ah, uh, that's. Oh, yeah, that just comes apart. I mean,. I was like, yeah, you know, if you have if you have any like S3 trios or you know like, Mach 64s, you know, send them my way. Not a 9800 GTX. What? Oh my gosh. Okay, so what do we got in here? It's pink. That has a complete system. What? TNET 200 network display adapter. Oh, that is a little ITX nugget. Oh. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, hold on, let me do some Googling. A few moments later. Okay, I did some Googling. I found a couple of things about this and some similar models. It looks like they're used for, you know, they use it for like literally network display duplication. Or like dig digital signage, and I'm like, hmm, digital signage. 
I wonder what this is going to be. I haven't opened this up yet, but I just took out the four screws on the bottom. I have a feeling... Ah, uh, I'm like, it's either going to be a geode, or it's going to be an atom, or it's going to be a via EPIA. Well, there you go. It's a via EPIA. That's awesome. I love these things. I have a C7 sitting, sitting in my closet. That's, it's in okay shape. Um, but I absolutely love these things. The little EPIAs are such a weird system on a chip platform. CPU? I don't know what you'd call them. I think platform is the most, the most accurate word to use to describe them. Um, cause there, you know, there's a CPU and then you've got your chipset that includes onboard graphics and sound, um, and they're frequently built into systems about this size. And awesome. I can't wait. This is going to be a fun one to dig into. Oh, it's got one of the, uh, where did they put that? I just noticed. Hang on one sec. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that in there. Way in there, this little white thing, right here. Um, I think that is a slot for some storage, and I think it's the same storage. I didn't think this was a standard in storage, but I think it is the same storage standard that I have for one of my geodes. Let me grab it and see if it's if it looks similar. I'm not going to take this whole thing apart here on this video because I've got a lot, a lot more packages to go through. But this is super awesome. <laughs> okay, found it. It's close. It's not exactly the same, which makes sense. Uh, the one that I have is for a wise terminal uh, from Dell. And it would make sense that Dell would use a proprietary connector. I think the size of that connector is too large for that socket down there. It looks like it's too big. That makes sense, because Dell and Wise were all about making those, uh, what were they? The Geode Thin Clients, they're, they're, um, the S1, S, or the S10, S30, all about making them as closed as possible and keeping them from being useful PCs. Um, anyway, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Holy cow. This is going to be a lot of fun to play around with. And, I don't know if you noticed while I was taking it out of the box. PCI slot. Which means graphics cards. <laughs> it's going to be good. Awesome. It's got a little, there's a little hard drive in there which I don't know what's on it, but um, I'd be curious to know the, the story behind this, Patrick. So you can either say something in the comments about it or um, we can catch up on Discord or on, uh, or on Twitter. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, that's cool. Look how little that fan is. It's so, it's so tiny. Bouncy. Anyway, uh, on to the next thing. All right. Well, that's that is super cool. Um, I don't want to make it sound like oh, I already have one of these. Um, the one that I have is just a bare board. This is this is an EPIA like in its natural environment, like doing a job. This is pretty cool. I'm curious to see if the software is still loaded on it, if it still works, and like if it's still usable as its original intention. That should be, this should be a fun thing to explore in a future video or a series of videos. Uh, awesome. I, I don't know, I have no idea like what speed or type of via CPUs in this. It should be really neat. This should be really neat to explore. Thank you very much. Okay, next thing.
We'll just open it up that way. That makes total sense. Oh, oh, there's more in here. There's two cards in this one. First one is a Viber 16. Look at that. This card is pretty much, this, this formed the backbone of OEM PC audio back in the day. If you got, you got a, a PC from Dell or Gateway, it pretty much guaranteed to have one of these cards in it. Very, very, very common card. The other card in the box is this passively cooled Zotac uh, 6200 AGP. That's pretty neat. I don't remember if the 6200 was a native AGP chip or it looks like yeah I don't see a I don't see a bridge chip on it so it looks like that was a native chip. Yeah, looking between the heatsink here and I don't see a bridge chip. So cool, native AGP GeForce 6200. Awesome. I mean, I just got an X. I just got the Radeon 1300. Like, I I actually really love these little low end GPUs. They're surprising if you put them in older systems. They can actually make a really good, um, a really good general use card. So this will be fun to benchmark. Okay. Next thing. That's so cool. If this is a mainstay, this is a mainstay of retro GPU testing, uh, a Matrix MGA. This is a, uh, it's a Millennium. Oh, G a G250. Interesting. I don't know if this is an OEM card or not. Oh, this is going to be really interesting to test. These are really cool cards. Matrix was such an interesting company. They made a bunch of really promising uh, GPU cards, and then, like everyone else in the 90s and early 2000s, they just got crushed by NVIDIA. So this will be really cool to test, too. Thank you. So there's a second one in this one. There is. Another one in PCI. Is this also a 200? It looks like it might be. FY220P. That's awesome. Because these are these are great cards to try on PCI systems because they're right about the right performance level. They're just about the, the performance level of a Voodoo one, but you've got integrated you know you've got you've got integrated 2D graphics as well as 3D. And this has something else. What is this? Of course, it's not a typical Matrox MGA. It's got some kind of extra connector on it. I wonder if that's for like 3D, gla 3D glasses or something. Anyway, that is in beautiful condition. <laughs> that's going to be really fun to test too. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you. Next thing. It's a little bit hard to focus this on this tiny little screen. Alright, so... This knife has gotten duller and duller. I need to get a new blade for it.
Look at that. We can open it the normal way this time. So, an MSI PCI Express card, which is a... I don't know. It says N721GD. 1GD3. Ooh, this might be a GeForce uh, 720. GT720 with GDR, GDDR3. Ooh, maybe. Or is it 7200? I don't know. Well, I will have to test this. Perfect. Little entry level card. Well, it's got HDMI on it, so it's got to be like a GT710, 720. That's pretty cool. N721 GD3. HLP. Help. That's going to come in handy with the uh, with the Netburst November coming up. Oh, uh, look at that. This is an original Audi? I think she's, this is the original Audi G. I love these cards. These are so good. Just a good, like, value... I guess it wasn't budget back in the day, it was pretty premium. But, you know, it was pretty good audio quality out of a PC sound card back in the day. Lots of neat features on it. EAX, the built-in wavetable. This one looks like it's got surround support. Yeah, it does. Surround support and digital out. And a, a firewire connector on a sound card. Okay, that's... That's that's weird. I did not realize the original Audigy had a had a firewire connector. Well, that should be interesting. I don't have any firewire things <laughs> yet. Oh, all my firewire stuff I abandoned in the two thousands. I used to have so much firewire stuff. Mostly mostly hard drives. But it all fell by the wayside when USB three came out. Okay, next thing. There we go. Got another one open correctly. First card looks like a uh, TNT. Are you a TNT? You are an Asus something. Okay, V9520, 120 megs. That's not a TNT, I don't think. Let me Google that quick. There we go. Asus V9520. 128 is a GeForce FX 5200. Beautiful. I had an FX 5200 back in the day. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> it existed. And now another one exists. I once again have an FX 5200. <laughs> awesome. This should make for a good, and being AGP, this should make for a good comparison card amongst all my other AGP cards. Awesome. Thank you. The other PCB is... Oh, look at that. This is... This is a 4 meg verge? Oh, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, it's a, it's a verge on board 325. Um, but it also has, I think that's 3D glasses connector. <laughs> this is pretty dirty. It's going to need to clean, but yep, it's Diamond Stealth 3D 2000. This can go with my other Stealth 3D 2000, and that's about what it's worth in raw materials. <laughs> oh, Verge. Next thing.
I mean, I make fun of the Verge. But, like, S3 did redeem themselves. At least somewhat. Like, with the release of of the Savage and Savage 4. Ooh. ATI Bridge. What are you? It's an all-in-one 8500. I was just talking about how I don't have any of these. I've wanted 8500 for a while. It really needs to be cleaned. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's great. That is absolutely fantastic. Look at look at all the look at all the weird connectors on the front of this thing. It's like an all in one breakout board or something. Look at that. And again with the firewire. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, all in wonder eighty five hundred. Sweet. That's gonna be that's gonna make a great addition to the AGP test bench. Absolutely terrific. Okay. Next PCB, another Autogy. I think it's the same model. It is SB0090. Well, that's not so. That's not. That's no bad thing. You can never have too many Sound Blaster Autogies. These things are super compatible. Sweet. Thank you. Next thing. The classic and venerable 550 Ti. Come on, come on, zoom, thank you. Freaking camera. That's gonna be the next channel upgrade, I swear. I'm gonna get a new B cam. I'm so sick of doing this. Manual focus. Step zoom. Alright. The venerable and widely recognized GTX 550 Ti. Beautiful. This card is in phenomenal condition. I am extremely looking forward to testing this. I never had one. I got back on the NVIDIA train around um, by my GTS 450. 450? 450. GTS 450, that was my Fermi GPU. Um, and I, I went straight from there to a, a GTX 770. I never I never had a 500 or 600 series card, so awesome. I know this is basically just a die shrink of uh, original Fermi, but good stuff. Thank you. Right, let's see if I can get this thing to zoom out. Oh yeah. Next thing. It's a bundle of RAM. A wild bundle of RAM appeared. Alright, what do we got in here? Let's zoom in on this. What do we got? 
Oh, here we go. There's the SD RAM. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Overflowing with SD RAM. Look at all this. Got some low profile SD RAM. Got some high profile SD RAM. Well, I guess it's all high profile SD RAM. It's just that the Crucial thinks a lot of itself. Sweet. Gosh, look at all this. Well, now I don't have to keep ferrying the same three sticks between all my machines. <laughs> so I appreciate this a lot. Extremely a lot. Thank you. I'll put that with the other RAM. Oh, DDR, SDR. There we go. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> you know, I ordered a bunch of these. <laughs> now I've gotten three, uh, just from opening random stuff up. I've, the four of these that I ordered are still going to arrive. <laughs> I went from having none of these to overflowing with them. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Ooh, that, uh, oh, a Verge GX. Nice. This is the SG RAM version of the Verge. Um, which, you know, SG RAM, dual ported, so there's hopes that it would be faster. Uh, I don't think the Verge GX is any faster than the 325. Maybe it's not faster than the DX. I don't remember. Worth testing, though. Awesome. Thank you. Next thing. Look at that. So there is the promised range two that I was talking about. This is this is in beautiful condition. I have a, a soft spot in my heart for these. These are like trash tier chips from ATI back in the day, but you know, having grown up with Max and having used all of their G3, all of Apple's G3 models back in the day. Rage 2, Rage 2C, and Rage Pro are pretty much what you got as onboard video on those machines. So this is nice. It's a nice little addition. And oh, all the connectors. All the connectors for an all in wonder. Awesome. Thank you. Love this. At the very least, like, it's what? It's a, it's a 3D Rage 2. It's not a Rage 2 Turbo. It's, I can compare it against, like, my Voodoo Graphics, but the Voodoo Graphics is going to just stomp all over this thing. Still, very cool. Early 3D Accelerator. And actually a really, really, really competent 2D card, too. So, cool. Thank you. Second PCB in the package is you're an anonymous looking AGP card. What are you? Copyright 1998 ATI Technologies. Are you a Rage 128? You are a Rage 128. Check that out. Beautiful. Again, you can never have too many Rage 128s. It's a pretty fair middle of the road graphics card. You know, honestly, I have I have no ill will for the Rage 128. Again, growing up with with Max and using the G3 Max, uh if you got a Tower G3, uh this was the default card. So, I have 
many, many years of experience with the Rage 128. I actually kind of like it. It's a nice little card. Thank you. Next thing. All right, what are you? <laughs> you are definitely a graphics card. What are you? Oh no, it's a mystery graphics card. Oh, this should be interesting to figure out. <laughs> Patrick sent me a mystery. What is this thing? There's almost no markings on it. EWV02, 94V-0. I'm like, looking all over this thing for anything on this board. What is this thing? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, this is going to be an interesting mystery to solve. Huh. A mystery graphics card. There is seriously... <laughs> There's seriously, like, nothing on this board to identify what it is. Look at this. There's just jumper locations and, you know, chip callouts and some silk screening about, like, what component goes where, but... Nothing on this thing about what it is. Well, that's... That's going to be fascinating to figure out. I have no idea what this thing is. <laughs> Thank you. Shoot. Now I have a new thing to be nerd sniped about. Let's go investigator. Unknown video card. Okay. What do we got here? There we go. ATI, what are ya? Okay, uh, I, think my, I think my camera cut out there. I'm not sure what was the last thing I recorded. Uh, I think the next channel upgrade is going to be a new B camera. Anyway, this is the main event. The whole reason everyone's here, the whole reason I'm here doing this video. This is the motherboard that Patrick sent over after, after watching my video where I lament the death of my AGP Socket 7 board. So. Let's give it an open and see what it is. Now 
many, many apologies. Um, that memory card filled up, and I realized y'all didn't get to see this motherboard as I pulled it out of the bag. So sorry. But this is a Shuffle Hot uh, via MVP3. Let's see if this will focus. Hey, look at that. Yeah, this would be phenomenal for uh, the Socket 7 build off. But that is it for this, I don't know, episode of pickups? I don't know if I'm going to make this a regular thing, but like, holy cow. Huge shout out to Patrick over at uh, Old Computer Rebuilds. Look at all this cool stuff. I am going to have a blast testing all this. Thank you so, so much. It, <laughs> it was supposed to be a motherboard and a verge and maybe a... Uh, maybe a Rage 2 all in wonder, and this is just, it's just so much. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it.